The seven star terror raid event for Rillaboom is now back in Scarlet and Violet. We're going to cover all of the details as well as the best Pokemon to solo this with in your game. So as of recording this video on the 4th of August, the Rillaboom 7 star terror raid event is now back in Scarlet and Violet for its second phase in the games. And it is going to be the last opportunity you're going to have to get this 7 star terror raid Pokemon with the mightiest mark. This second phase for Rillaboom will be running until the 6th of August. Of course, if you do not go online after the 6th of August, you will keep this event in your game so you can go and farm for those high cost items that the rewards dish out when you beat the Rillaboom. Rillaboom will be level 100. It will have its hidden ability, Grassy Surge, which brings Grassy Terrain to the field for five turns, boosting grass type attacks. Its moves is gonna have our Drum Beating, Acrobatics, Body Slam, Low Kick, with additional moves of Growth, which boosts its special attack and attack by one stage every time it uses it. Boom Burst, which is a big, powerful, normal type special attack and move, and Bulk Up, which boosts its attack and its defense by one stage every time it uses it. It can never be shiny it will have the normal terror typing it won't have a held item but it will have the mightiest mark and you can only catch one of these per save file but bear in mind you can respawn the raid dens and just farm them for these high cost items that you're going to have access to which include things like large candy xl candy carbos you're going to get a lot of normal terror shards ability patches ability capsules and an array of other high cost items like i say this is the second phase and the final time the real boom will be appearing in its mightiest mark seven star terror raid form in the games for now and it will be running until the 6th of august now to access the rillaboom event in your game you're going to need to come down to your poker portal you're going to make sure that you are online and then come down to your mystery gifts and then get poker portal news updates and then when you've done that you'll get this message and all of the terror raid events in the paldea region will update and the seven star raids will appear on your map there will be only one on your map but it will look like a six star terror raid but it will have the normal type terror symbol and once you get to the raid it will look a little bit like this and now we're going to cover the builds for this video now we already covered Corviknight before in our previous update video when the raid went live for the first time but i still stand by this is the most consistent pokemon to take into these raids it's accessible to everyone you don't need pokemon home to get access to this good pokemon it is available in paldea and like i say it is the most consistent build that you're going to be able to go in and farm for these higher cost items to do this solo in your game. A Covenite is a flying and steel type. Fighting terror type is the choice on here. I do really like the expert belt item on it, but that can be interchanged if you have a different preference. Then we have level 100, move set of Roost, Iron Defense, Screech, and Body Press. I've seen players interchange the Roost for Reflect if they're running something like the Shell Bell item on there, but I just prefer having Roost because it's just a nice way to get recovery if you need it as and when, but it's very rare that you're going to need it because Corviknight's typing means that you're going to be resisting pretty much all of Rillaboom's attacks. The EV spread that we've got on this Corviknight is going to be 252 HP, 252 defense with an impish nature and the rest put in special defense and make sure it has its hidden ability mirror armor so you're going to need to use an ability patch on the Corviknight to get this mirror armor ability what it does is just bounce back any stat drops that you would normally take from moves that the Rillaboom would throw out at you and if you want roost on your Corviknight it is an egg move but find something in your boxes with roost then attach a mirror herb item to your Corviknight. Just make sure that you do forget a move. So you've got a move slot free on your Corviknight and then put the Corviknight and the Pokemon with Roost into your party, set up a picnic and Roost will be transferred over to the Corviknight. So it's as easy as that. Just make sure that that is something you're aware of if you are wanting to use Roost. So that is the Corviknight. As always, all of the builds that we are featuring in today's video will be down in the description below. And I am primarily featuring builds that are gonna be consistent that don't heavily rely on Intimidate NPC support in these raid battles. So Corviknight, like I say, you're going to find it very difficult to get beat going in against the Rillaboom with your Corviknight. You're going to have pretty much a nearly 100% success rate. And I feel like the only things that can go wrong in this raid if you don't approach it right and the timer is the only thing that's going to catch you out. Otherwise, you're going to have a really good consistent way of beating the Rillaboom pretty fast and it's probably the most fast and quickest method to doing it solo in your games. 
you want to have an overview of how to exactly go into the raid with the Corviknight, check out the video now. I'll link it up in the right hand corner for you that we uploaded last week that goes into detail of the full raid video where we talk through exactly how you use your move options and beat the Rillaboom consistently with this Corviknight. Next Pokemon I'm going to suggest you use if you don't have access to Corviknight or you want to use something different is going to be Galarian Zapdos if you have access to this Pokemon. It is of course only accessible through trade from Pokemon Home from Sword and Shield but it is a very solid option. Again doesn't really rely too much on Intimidate support either. Uh, it is a fighting and flying type so it is going to have a weakness to acrobatics but you are going to be able to kind of cope with that a little bit better with the Galarian Zapdos being a legendary Pokemon and all. Terra typing is going to be fighting and it is going to have the Shell Bell held item level 100 and it is going to have the move set of close combat, taunt, bulk up and thunderous kick with an EV spread of 252 attack, 252 defense and an adamant nature with that defiant ability. So the basic premise with the Zapdos is turn one you're going to go for a bulk up that's just going to allow you to take things like the acrobatics a little bit better going forward. Then you just going to fire off thunderous kicks and spam thunderous kicks just make sure that you have pp maxed your thunderous kick every time you use thunderous kick it's going to lower the defense on the rillaboom by one stage meaning it is going to get weaker every time you use it after the rillaboom sets up its shield the thunderous kick will still be able to reduce that defense stat on the rillaboom through the shield then the next step that you're looking out for is going to be watching for when the rillaboom resets your stat drops on your side of the field after this point Go for two bulk ups and then just spam thunderous kick for the rest of the match until you can terrestrialize and then you're going to be able to remove the rillaboom pretty easily now it is a tiny bit slower i found than the corviknight overall but again it doesn't rely on intimidate support to actually beat the rillaboom in this raid so you're going to have an easy time no matter what npc characters come into the raid with you if you have intimidate of course it does make it a lot easier it makes it a lot quicker but Galarian Zapdos is going to be an option that you can use going into this raid and have a lot of consistency and that's the main thing that we're looking for with going in against this Rillaboom because primarily a lot of you are probably going to be farming for the Rillaboom even if you have beat it that first time but if you haven't then these builds will be good enough for you to do it in your game by yourself without needing to go online and rely on friends or just randoms that might not be the best thing for going into these raids sometimes next up is good old iron hands it is a very good option going into this raid we have got the metronome item it is level 100 and the terror typing is fighting on it we have a move set of electric terrain sword stance iron defense and drain punch quark drive the ability and an ev spread of 252 attack 252 defense and an adamant nature now the iron hands does really appreciate intimidate support but doesn't necessarily need it in particularly with this set so the idea originally was to run belly drum on it but what i found was is that you're not really often in a position where you've got enough health after setting up the iron defenses to get the belly drum off whereas sword stands once you've got three iron defenses off you're going to be in a position where you're taking very little damage from the rillaboom and you're going to be able to get those sword stances up to expedite your damage very quickly and it is a very consistent way to go into the raid the basic premise of this is turn one you're going to go for that electric terrain get rid of the grassy terrain on the rillaboom then you're going to go for one iron defense and then you're going to spam drain punch until the rillaboom sets up a shield and then nullifies all the stat boosts on your side of the field you may have to faint that's not a problem don't worry about getting knocked out and then what you're going to do after your stats have been nullified is go for three iron defenses that's going to put you in a brilliant position going forward in the match if you've got time go for those three sword stances and then for the rest of the raid you can go for those drain punches trust lies in the process while you're doing that and then just finish off the really boom and you're going to have no problem with this with the iron hands you don't necessarily need intimidate support and i do feel like it was something i wanted to include in this video as an option because iron hands is something that a lot of you do have the metronome item obviously every time you use a move consecutively it does increase the power of that move meaning you're going to be doing more damage but you can expedite that damage even more with the sword stance that you're going to have a little bit more flexibility than the belly drum especially when you pair it up with the iron defense so this is probably my favorite iron hands build that i've been using and been using it pretty consistently and that is the key thing with all of these builds the consistency that you're going to be able to get for just going through and soloing the Rillaboom in game. And the final Pokemon that I am gonna to suggest today, it's probably not as good as the 
other three, but if it is a Pokemon that you want to use, you haven't got access to the other three, and you have got access to a Zamazenta, then this is just a good option going forward. It is going to be a little bit slower, but it can at times be very quick as well, depending if you have Intimidate support or not. It doesn't really rely on the t Intimidate support too much, but again, it would appreciate it if you do get it. Zamazenta are going to be a fighting type. Obviously, it will be fighting and steal with that Rusted Shield because it's going to take its crown form when it goes into the battle, when it starts off, and it will instantly get a defense boost with its Dauntless Shield ability that it has access to. Level 100, Fighting Terror type, like I say, and the moveset we're going to run is Reflect, Iron Defense, Snarl, and Body Press. EV spread is going to be 252 HP, 252 Defense with, again, that impish nature and the basic premise of this is going to be to reflect turn one that's going to cut down the attack power and the physical attacks from the Rillaboom by a big margin for the next five turns that's going to give you room to just then spam the body presses now I would spam body presses until you get your stats nullified on your side of the field from the Rillaboom then go for those three iron defenses you may need to rely on a heal chair because you've got no way to recover with the Zamazenta and that's one of the big drawbacks with it you don't have any line of recovery in the moveset or with its health item but you can use the heal chair as and when you need to get those three iron defenses off and then just start spamming body press terrestrialize when you can and then go forward from there and you're going to have a pretty easy time with zamazenta against the rillaboom and like i say it is a very consistent option but top of the list as always still it's going to be the corviknight then the glaring zapdos then the Iron Hands and Zamazenta, but all good options. So that is the four builds that we're going to feature this coming weekend for the Seven Star Rillaboom Terror Raid event in Scarlet and Violet for its second phase. It's final time. Have fun if you are taking part farming for the items or just grabbing it for the first time in your games. And with it coming to an end on Sunday, we normally get the announcement of our next Seven Star Terror Raid event. But as it stands, who knows what that is going to be because it feels like this first cycle of the Seven star terror raid events has come to an end so it'll be interesting to see if anything does get announced on sunday obviously there is all that theory about the seven star mewtwo terror raid event in the games and it hasn't dropped yet so who knows when that will drop maybe that's what we'll get next but we might get something else and i do think if there's anything that we are going to get before the dlcs drop it might be the Paldean starter Pokemon that we get in 7 Star Terror Raid events. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below. And I'll look forward to reading through your thoughts on what that next 7 Star Terror Raid event will be. If you've enjoyed today's video, please drop a like. Do subscribe to the channel so you stay up to date with all of our Pokemon Scarlet and Violet content. And I will see you all in another video very soon. So until then, friends, take care of yourselves and bye-bye. <laughs>